At Golf Breaks, we have a fantastic partnership with Callaway Golf. One of the beauties with that partnership is we give our clients some incredible VIP fitting experiences right here at Callaway HQ. I'm gonna show you what that's all about. So as you come here through to the reception, one of the best parts about this place, they have a state-of-the-art simulator where you get fitted. Not only that, they have their own performance parking studio right here as well, but we're concentrating on the fitting simulator today. Afternoon. How are you doing, Chris? Good to see you. Good to I see you. All right. Welcome in. So here we have it. This is the simulator you'll get fitted. So if you win a prize with us for a full set of Callaway clubs, this is where the magic happens. So Chris is going to talk us through why it's so important nowadays to have that fitting experience. So as I mentioned outside, it is so, so important nowadays to get custom fit. And I've got Chris here, the main man here, who's going to explain that in more detail. So simply put, why should you get custom fit? Uh, very simply, it is optimization. It is making sure the equipment works for your particular swing. Um, the way I approach it is every single golfer swings the club differently, so they need to spend the time, whether it's 30, 40 minutes, come and see us for an hour here, just make sure the clubs are dialed into how they need. So if it's a driver, let's just optimize shaft, spin, all those sort of top line things, and then we go into greater detail um, into here. But it's really just to make sure the club works for the golfer. Really. Perfect. And this. This goes towards any golfer, right? So if you are a 36 handicap or a scratch golfer, is it the same experience? It really is, yeah, yeah. The unique thing about the performance center here is that we'll get any type of golfer in here. So we had John Rahm in here last year. You know, we'll have somebody who's never played golf before. So we really cater to all abilities. And I think it's, it's very important to, early on in the game, get fit so that you can optimize your equipment and just make sure if you are gonna make the investment and lay out cash, you know, hard-earned cash mm -hmm. for this game, just make sure the clubs are doing the right job and just get them tweaked up so that they stay in the bag longer. So if one of our clients is lucky enough, like you guys at home, to win a full set, which is full 14 club bag, so how does that work? So they arrive here during the day, sign in, come into this great room, yeah. what happens first? Well, first of all, we'll get them warmed up because they're going to hit a couple of balls. Um, so we'll start off with their irons. I like to use irons as a bit of a warm up. So we'll dial that in. We'll go through all of our different models, shafts, head combos, everything like that, and make sure we've got the spec of the club dialed. And then we'll move on to driver. So a good warm up with a seven iron, then we'll start hitting the big swings and then we'll sort of work our way through the long game. Uh, the advantage of doing that is figuring out how far someone hits their irons and then their driver just helps us fill in the gaps there. Mm -hmm. And then we finish off with some light work, wedge work just to help them out and just cool off after the session. So it's, it's 90 minutes well spent in here. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it myself, I'm sure you see it, is that it still surprises me nowadays that someone will go into a, into a retailer, spend five, 600 pound on a driver, not even hit, hitting it and pulling it off the rack. Um, so, you know, for, for your take on that, I mean, if you see that happening, what would you say to that person? Well, I've seen in my career of fitting, which is about six years, I've seen somebody pull a club off the rack and it work once. So yeah, it's, it's a hit and miss for sure. And it doesn't usually hit. So mm. I would just make sure that the club works for that golfer, even if they're just gonna ever got too much time. I, I really think the off the rack days are done now. It's more about just going and getting it tested or coming to see someone like, like me here and just get the equipment dialed in. Uh, it's a big risk to take, I would yeah. say. It's I think it's, just, yeah, I think it's the, the yeah. confidence as well, right? You know exactly what you guys have in your bag is fitted specifically to you. Um, there's no excuse then, right? Exactly. All we do here is take excuses away from yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, guys, when you win that prize with us, you'll come here, you have this great experience, then you really have no excuses and you get to be treated you know, pretty much like a tour pro for the day. So to really show off that fitting experience, I've got two of my colleagues here from Golf Break. Jack, you might have seen in some of our videos already, we've got a new, new member of the team on video for the first time, Ollie. They both work in marketing. We're gonna fit them for a driver today and then have a long drive challenge. If you wanna watch that long drive challenge, see who wins, just click the link up here and you can watch that. But for the time being, Chris, just try and work your magic somehow with these boys. Do it. I think you're gonna need more than magic, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, who wants to go first? Go on, you go. All right, I'll go. Go. So just rough spec at the moment then, we're talking about your driver's 10.5. Yeah. Um, what um, do you know, shaft do you have in there? Just, uh, just regular. a regular. Standard regular, yeah. Just a regular, okay. All right, so we're gonna start you off so this might look rubbish, I've just got to put some dots on these. I'm going to start you off in a 10.5 head. What head are you starting with, Chris? So we're going to start off with Max. We're going to go for the most, sort of most popular model. So it's that, just our, stand the standard head? Just the standard, yeah. yeah. It's just a nice little start point. Um, and it's just going to help us just establish a base. So 10.5 uh, on loft, you know, most players can use a 10.5 and then we'll go up or down what we need from there in terms of spin and launch. What are the, what are the dots for? So this just helps Foresight pick up, so it's an infrared camera in the system. It's just gonna help uh, track exactly what's going on with the club face. So we can really dial it in. So there's no hiding from this. 
suddenly quite scared. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't nervous already. <laughs> so we're just going to put you in just to one of our sort of, you know, nice sort of entry level shafts here. So 10.5 in the max, so nice and easy to hit. And then I'm just going to show you exactly where we hit from here. Cool. Thank you. So if you want to grab a, a T height that you're comfortable with, bud. So orange is the highest, pink is sort of one down from that. So pink's the most popular. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll just show you where to hit from here. All good. So if you go two feet in front where it says chrome soft there, there's a few, a few balls there as well. You want to just tee up two feet from there, you'll get a nice uh, green light, so it's ready there. Okay, cool. So yeah, go ahead and hit um, a few for us, pal. We'll just use this as your baseline hit, so I'm just going to establish uh, where you're at from here. It's a bit hooky. It is a little bit. <laughs> are, you just bu are, you, are you just buzzing you made contacts? I'm buzzing that I hit the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I have just noticed there's a few marks above the screen, actually. Oh, God, yeah. And they're, def they're all drivers, too. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, you Strive. do wedges in here. I'm like, no, they're drivers. <laughs> That's ball. Yeah, nice. Okay, so what we're going to do now, that's the standard max head. Yeah. Um, just going to have a look at um, the triple diamond as well. Now, just noting straight out the gate, your strikes, um, you know, your fastest ball speeds are from slightly lower in the face. So we're going to yeah. go with a slightly deeper face driver, which is the triple diamond. So slightly smaller head, it's 10 cc smaller, slightly deeper face as well. So if we do catch those lower shots, it's going to be really good at bearing a lot on that spin. Even on a draw shot there. So the last one there, nice high draw, but there was three and a half thousand RPM of spin on there. So let's just try a lower spinning head and see what happens. Oh, nice. What would you say is the miss hit shot for you when you're on the golf course? I always go right most of the time. No. That's ball. Love that. Feel good, all? Yeah, that was much better than the last one, didn't I? So what have you tried to do with Ollie? Are you trying to get spin down? Was that the first point of call? Yeah, so straight away with a 10.5 driver, um, we just know he's spinning at he's like 3,200. Um, that last one just crept it up there a little bit, but on average before he's cruising at like 3,000, so we knocked a little bit off. A little bit of work to do, shaft and everything and length, but um, straight away, just looking at a quick ball speed test. So first thing we do in a fitting is just identify which of our heads is going to work better for that golf club. Knowing that while he's hitting it out to the right a little bit, we probably don't want to put him too near a fade bias driver. So it's, it, I wouldn't say it's purely fade bias, but the triple diamond will sit a little bit more open for most golfers. So. With somebody who want, doesn't want to hit the ball right, if we show you the face slightly open, it's probably not going to fill you with confidence. So, <laughs> um, so good ball speed, but I think we can actually get a little bit faster ball speed out of the standard head. But let's let's go for one more of these, okay. and we're gonna we're gonna take the loft down in a minute. Lovely strike. Okay. So what we're gonna do is go back into our standard max head, but I'm gonna knock the loft down. I think. That spin, it's not um, its not coming from strike location, I think it's just the actual loft on the club head. So let's take that down. Feeling confident for the long drive on? Or? I think I've got some work to do. <laughs> well, it's going to be five but shots um, each. Yeah. Five shots each. Yeah. Oh, you're saying do you have to hit the fairway? Any parameters in there? Like that, that fairway is pretty wide. It's <laughs> yeah, I, th I think, yeah, we'll say just anywhere on that grid. Okay. Pure distance. So let's just jump back into um, the standard max head here. All you've yeah. done is just taken the loft down and then. Once we know what sort of loft we're going to play, uh, we're going to start experimenting with shafts a little bit here, but we're still in our baseline testing shaft for now. Yeah, we've got better strikes on this yeah. one now. So we'll pull a few shaft so options. Well. Just looking at your club head speed, Ollie, as well, I definitely think whatever you're in right now, in terms of if, if it's any kind of regular flex, your club head speeds are 109 miles an hour, so you're shifting it pretty good, so that's where a lot of your spin's coming from. So what we're going to have to do here is get you into something that you're not dominating as much. I just feel like that shaft might just be moving around a little bit for you. So that's kind of an entry weight shaft, standard flex. Um, so what we're going to do now is just do a little bit more experimenting. Yeah. But I like nine degrees for you. So he's too strong for that shaft, basically. Yeah. I don't want to like, you know, pump his tires on it, but yeah. Talk, flick talk. <laughs> He's not going to shut up in the office now. <laughs> yeah, so we've just gone into slightly firmer shaft here. 
That's all I'll tell you for now. I don't want to overload you with too much. Um, you know, that's just a golf club. What is the main point if you know you put Ollie in a stiffer shaft there? Is that yeah. simply to stop the head moving at impact? Yeah, so all we're trying to do here is stabilize, right? We want nice boring golf through the hitting area. So if we give him a shaft that's gonna move around loads. So if you know if he really goes after one, it's gonna slam shut on him. If he kind of lays off and tries to time it a little bit, he could hit it high and right. So okay. there's a bunch of different things that can happen through the strike area which will just fire the ball off in different directions. So right? it's just, so. In all, also from like a confidence point of view, you're thinking less movement, yeah. the purpose would be more yeah. square. If we can just keep it nice and quiet through the hitting area, so once he gets into delivery and then starts releasing the head, mm -hmm. if we can keep that nice and stable, he's gonna see stable ball flights. Uh -huh. right? So we'll just you know, create that stability in the club, let him transfer it to the ball, and we'll start seeing good drives. And it's kind of, my job is to get that option in his hands and the, the club that goes on the course has the least amount of dispersion mm -hmm. on the face. Yeah, just gonna make a quick tweak here, one, Just doing a little length test at the moment with the shaft here. So I think that club's a touch on the long side for you. Just seeing some slightly low to high strikes, but all based on the heel. Now, for all these path, that would tell me that we've just got a club on a tiny bit on the long side there. It's a nice shot, oh, Ollie. Look at that. This is the longest drive of the day. Look at the strike as well. So, so you shortened the shaft there because it was coming out of the... Yeah, he kind of had a load of high heels. Yeah. So it just tells me a little bit for someone who's you know, always passed a couple of degrees across the ball. Yeah. If anything, we'd see a slight toe strike. But yeah. So when we get repeated heel strikes, we kind of know, hang on a minute, the yeah. club might be a little bit on the long side. I think it's really good for people at home to know as well, like I'm sure hopefully Chris agrees with me other than I'm talking rubbish, is <laughs> people have this um, ideology that the longer the shaft, the longer you'll be, which, which if you strike out of the middle every single time, physics would tell us that's correct. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people on tour use a shorter shaft. The reason for that is quality of strike. So I, I, I'm no tour player, but I found that if I use a longer shaft, my strike's all over the place. I hit the ball less far. And if I've shortened the drive, I tend to hit out the middle more and gain more distance. So don't be worried about getting a custom fit. And if you are going shorter on the driver, actually, it can actually help things, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot of people say longer club head, faster swing. Fair enough, that may happen because you've just got a longer object in your hands. But if you're not, like you said, if you're not hitting the middle of the club face, then it's not going to be a fun experience. So the idea is to get that ball out of the middle of the face every time, just like we saw there. So it's perfect. We do sometimes. Happen, yeah. We do sometimes see club speeds go up as well. Just yeah. confidence comes back a little bit, and then the golfer starts to feel comfortable. And mm. I always say comfortable golfers are dangerous because they'll really start swinging good at the ball. So, mm. so yeah, it's it's how we get you out of the middle, whether it be long, short. If we go an inch shorter, like yourself, just yeah. for a bit of control. Wherever we get um, our golfers to hit the middle of the face, that's the, the length we go for. Yeah. So. And more fair ways here. Yeah, because Ollie, this, this is your first driver fitting ever, right? Yeah. So before, if you were to buy a driver, you'd what? Maybe go to a second hand site or you'd buy off a mate? Yeah, my current one came from an old mate. So there you go. He's already used it. It's had you, ever, had you, had you well. hit it before that? No. You just literally saw a bite off you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. It, was, it, it was the Rogue, the Callaway Rogue. Oh, nice. At least, it was at least it was Callaway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's got a good, it's got a good taste. <laughs> Strike. Again. The one before was yeah. Yeah. battered. And we'll keep that in mind, right? So as we go through and we start to see progressions in patterns, so we start to learn more about strike. What happened there is that the club face was just a little more open than before. So club face there, well, he had one and a half degrees open on the first swing at this setup. That was nearly eight degrees open on that one. So throwing the heel at the ball with the face open is going to turn the ball to the right. Yeah. But again, that's nothing you need to worry about. I would just uh, keep swinging, just keep hitting balls and I'll do the rest. Have to be you do point. the fun part. <laughs> oh, nice ball. So I'm not sure if you reacted at all, because when I told you the club face was nearly eight degrees open, yeah. took a pause and then you squared the face completely. That is 0.0. .0. So that is, oh. can't really ask for better than that. And as a result, when you close the face, <laughs> you, you drop the spin as well. So. You do hit the ball quite high, I would say. I'm not yeah. sure if through the bag you do, but with driver so far, I mean, that was 152 feet in there, so that's that's got snow on it. But as a result, you drop the spin because of the strike location and you turned your face over. So, you know, high launch, low spin, that's that's the key to hitting bombs, right? So you've carried that 268 and it's rolled to 286. 286. So that's good driver. Very much that was all you doing, that was nothing to do with me. Jack's now sweating. It's 
the Ollie we know and love. <laughs> okay, let's change shaft again. So look, we had one in there that was pretty good, right? But do we yeah. want, um, in terms of a batting average, do we want to get you to hit one bomb in six? Or do we want to work on that average, I think? You, know, you, had, average. you had two, I'd say three very good strikes. So half of those were really good strikes. One of them really stuck out as a, yeah. we all know which one that was, that two swings ago, that was awesome. So let's just try now. We're purely shaft testing here. You've got, as your club head speed starts to speed up a little bit, as we're putting slightly, you know, slightly more confidence inspiring setups uh, in your hand, you've gone up like two miles an hour in club head speed. So you just saw, you're cruising now, you've got good speed here. I think that's worth worth saying when you come for a custom fit, like that, that first kind of 10, 20 minutes is, is quite nerve wracking. I think when you come in here, you've never met a fitter, you've expected to, to hit golf balls and you think you have to hit them well straight away. But as the session goes on, you warm up, you get more comfortable. And like you just said, well, Ollie's club SP has gone up two mile an hour already. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, that could be a mental thing. It could be he's just a bit more comfortable now. He's just kind of knocked the edges off of the adrenaline. Or the club in the hand's just getting more friendly. He's just getting used to hitting driver after driver. So yeah. it's just, he's cruising right now, which is awesome. But yeah, nothing to be worried about, pal. So I'll just run you through the driver that's going in the bag, pal. So we're going with the standard model. So this is the Max. Yeah. A uh, little bit of tinkering on here. So we made the shaft a little bit shorter. So we've gone with a 60 gram Kylie White, this guy here. It's a nice stable shaft. It's a nice consistent taper as well. So we're not loading the weight too much in any part of the driver. So it's just nice and neutral throughout. Um, yeah. Just made a couple of adjustments as we're going through. So I've moved the weight around into draw. So this APW weight here, that can really help us out in terms of strike, face control, ball direction, all those good things. For yourself, we do have that kind of tendency to get towards the heel. So yeah. what I've done is just moved the weight around into the heel, almost fully around. All that's just done is helped us square up a little better on the face. But uh, most importantly, just putting a bit of mass behind that part of the club face, right? So just a little CG move. Number one, it's gonna help strike, it's gonna feel great, and then it's gonna move ball flight too. And then we've just added a tiny bit of loft. This is a nine degree driver, uh, but on FC you've got a D plus one. So I've just added a degree of loft, so you're playing 10 degrees, and yep. then that D on there stands for draw, so we just up the toe a little bit. So just trying to help you turn it over without too much. They kind of go against each other a touch because we've got a nice firm stable shaft here to manage your club head speed and spin. And then we're just trying to turn the head over a touch as well. So yep. good weapon for you that. Yeah, no, it awesome. felt good. As, and there was 286 in there, so. Good yeah, driving. Then. I'll take that. Really nice. Day. Cool. Yeah. Palms are sweaty. <laughs> Here we go. Need weak arms. Yeah, we're we going into eight mile. <laughs> <laughs> so, just talk to me about your current driving, mate. You, you regular flex as well, or? Oh, I've got a stiff shaft. Okay. Um, but it's counterbalance. Oh yes. So, yeah, that's the um, one, yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. I know you said we don't. You don't really do them. Yeah, a lot, lot, of, lot of shaft manufacturers are kind of moving away from it a touch, but there's still a couple of options in there. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll test you in a counterbalance. I won't tell you when it's coming up. I'll just yeah, sure. I'll throw it in and see if it nice. cool. Let's just start off in a 10.5 stiff flex. Okay. Uh, everything quite neutral here, so no crazy settings going on. And then, yeah, let's use this as your cool. sort of first driver option here. Well, it looks good when you look down on the ball as well. Good. Good start. First win. <laughs> what have I missed? Straight out of the car. That. <laughs> Snap foot record. First hit of the day. Yeah. Made contact. Made contact, yeah. I'm not shaking anymore. Oh, I've gone high. That was high. So we've got a low striker and a high striker. Consistent. Full for the top of the club. So All the big down. chat here, now he's in. <laughs> I know. Yeah. He's really chirped. Still got five more swings to go. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of shape would you normally hit? Uh, I normally course? hit a fade. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, seeing a draw is a bit of a surprise. <laughs> like that sort of shape, but obviously that's Fairly typical, yeah. quite low. So have you gone into the 12 degree head that you're in now? Is that purely just for height? I think is so. Is it just more loft, I think more that's, height? Yeah, yeah, when I had it fitted, yeah. I think that was purely the reason why, yeah. Okay. But then obviously I get quite a lot of spin from that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was about to say, yeah. It's just revving a little bit. But. Yeah. <clears throat> that's the kind of line we've got to run a little bit in terms of fitting is getting you to present the right amount of loft with the right amount of spin. Yeah. And that's kind of where the, the magic lies, isn't it? Yeah. 
And I think that's why I had a counterbalance at the start as well, okay. to kind of eliminate the spin, but I mean, I don't know. I don't so is it, Chris, have you done the same thing with Jack to Ollie? So have you given them the exact same club to start with? It's a slightly different club. We're just a um, little sort of pre-hitting interview, just figure out what they're currently in. Just right. want to make them comfortable to start with. We don't want to drag them out of their comfort zone. So, so, so you ask what yeah. their driver they use and try and kind of match that up? Yeah. Yeah, so if the drivers are in the room, if we're like, let's let's get your current driver, and if they're in a 60 gram stiff 10.5, mm. what I'll do is just remove variables, I'll give them the Callaway version of that, and just say, yeah. you know, make if you change weight loads, loft loads, I'll be like, what, you know, what's going on? So mm. just trying to keep them comfortable, straight out of the gate, nothing too, no, don't want to depart too much in terms of feel, yeah. and then we'll go from there. So if, if our clients come in and they've won the prize, would you, they'll probably hit their driver to give you some baseline numbers and yeah. then get them into something. Yeah, we'll, all, we'll always have their baseline, so we'll get them nice and warmed up with some lines, just get them hit a few shots. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we'll start with their driver. We can even revisit it towards the end as well. A lot of times, a lot of golfers are like, well, I hit mine a while ago now, so I'm like, let's grab it back out. And once we've got the winning driver, we'll pull their current driver back out and go side by side again okay. and reevaluate. Nice. That's right. Right, so I'm happy with that um, that loft and that sort of face orientation. Okay. Funny enough, they're both exactly the same. They're both the same driver, oh, same loft. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. so we he both says got... he's off 22, by the way. Really? Yeah, which is true. It's ridiculous. Anyway. I think we should take handicaps into the distance. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be some kind of scale. <laughs> Shut <isn't there>? up. <laughs> Going up against a single digit. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I don't think we can get more perfect on strike than that. Yeah, that was nice. I like that. 276. It's close. This will be well, quite just close, yet. I reckon. Doesn't, not yet. Two no. yards at the moment. So, yeah, they're in there. Best of five, no pressure. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> we don't like that shot. <laughs> don't like the shot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between that shot, then? So, when we tried a minute ago that you liked is the Project X, it's the Hazardous 60. Did the same weight there, but we tried the Mitsubishi, uh, the Kaeli there. So there's something about Mitsubishi shafts you're just not a fan of, um, you know, transversely. I always really like it, those earlier. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go back into Project X and just have a little look. I think just in terms of their profile, yeah. there's something you like about just the profile of the shafts. So okay. We're going to try something a little different here. Shaft's works best so far is actually a consistent taper shaft. Smoked that one. Yeah, try that. So we've tried this shaft already. This worked very well. Okay. So I'm just going to go run back into this one here. Cool. That was off average. Take it. Fairway finder. Yeah. I'll take it, yeah. <laughs> it's a low one. I mean, it's on the grid. But I'll definitely low take runner. It. So, as Chris and I spoke about earlier, it's really, really important to get custom fit. And um, we've just demonstrated that with both Ollie and Jack getting fit for their driver. So, how did you find it, guys? Yeah, great. I feel um, I was a bit nervous coming in here, but um, I feel a bit more confident over the ball now. So, yeah. Yeah, it was really good, really good fun. Yeah, really interesting to see how the numbers change with all the different heads and settings. I mean, I've probably made a bit more gain than Jack did, but we'll, we'll see. Two yards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really enjoyable. And then, um, Chris, so how, how, did it, how did it end up? What sort of spec are we talking between, between the two of them? So it's interesting. I did ask the guys if they play golf together because they ended up in the same head, in the same loft with the same um, OptiFit setting on the head. Um, so yeah, quite interesting. Very different shafts in there though. So we've gone with the Project X. Um, with Jack in terms of just the sort of you know, hazardous black, so quite a firm shaft. Uh, with his club head speed, it's just important to control it as much as we can in standard length as well. And then with Ollie, we just shorten the shaft a little bit. You know, equally spec shaft, just from a different manufacturer. It's interesting, when we guys, when we tried you in different shaft manufacturers, it really stood out which one would work best for you. So you flipped it in that respect. 
but with the same head either way. And we, we increased quite a bit. I just put you guys in drivers to start with, just see how we get on. And we actually managed to get three miles an hour ball speed for you faster. Um, and then we actually managed to drop the spin by over a thousand RPM and you hit a drive 286. So um, really good gains there. Love Even that. more so over Jack, we actually, from your first setup, which wasn't far from this, there's a 10 mile an hour difference in ball speeds. So wow. just goes to show you could have the same head but with the wrong shaft, and they can be 10 miles an hour in that. So that's definitely something yeah, to, uh, well, it something what to we, look at. Exactly there. what we said at the start. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, if you, if you walk into a shop and you grab a club, you've, you've kind of got no idea of the potential and you come somewhere like this, get a, get a proper fitting from a proper fit, it makes all the difference. So I think you guys have no excuse. Um, we're now going to have a long drive, Ollie versus Jack. So if you want to watch that, just click the link above. And as I said, if you're lucky enough to win one of these, you know, Callaway giveaways we do with our great partners at Callaway, you'll come here experience this. And um, if you're one of those lucky winners, just enjoy it.